Hello everyone, welcome back to Crafts by the Bow for our Simple Sunday class. This week I've been talking a lot about basic card sizes and how I will use just a basic card size, whether I'm cutting it, portrait or landscape. And a lady called Doreen sent me a message and said, I don't quite understand what you mean by a basic card size. So I thought I'd take just a little while to explain what I mean by my card basic sizes. Now at the moment, I'm in North America, so we use letter size card. If you're in the UK and Europe, you might use A4 size, and that's slightly different to our North American letter size. Letter size here is eight and a half across the top by 11 in length. And what you do is you just cut it in half to make a card base. But there are two different ways to cut it in half, so I'm going to show you both of them. This is the very pretty Just Jade, which is one of our new colours. And uh, I'm really enjoying using it, and I thought I would just use it for tonight, just to show you how pretty it is. So, the first way to make our card is to have the shorter 8.5 at the top and the 11 inches down the side and you put it into your trimmer or your guillotine and you're going to cut it at four and a quarter because that's exactly halfway across. So you just line it up by the four and go across to the quarter. And then I'm just gonna close my little trimmer guide up and you just cut straight down. And that gives you two long pieces of card. And then you need to score them. You can either just fold them in half, but I like to score mine because that way I know it's exact and I don't get creased card. And you can use the, the trimmer as well. If you have a Stampin' Up trimmer, it has both a cutting blade and a scoring blade on. So because we've cut the short side, we're going to score on the long side. This is 11 inches, so we're going to score it at five and a half, which is exactly halfway across. So you just line it up at five and a half close it make sure your cutting blade is out of the way and we're just going to score with the little scoring tool okay. now if you don't have a trimmer like this another thing you might have is a scoreboard and this is a scoreboard and you can see it's got a ruler across the top and the bottom and then it's got lots of little lines little grooves in it and all you do is you get your piece of card this is that same piece that we've already used and we know we're going to line it up and score at five and a half. So you push your piece of card up to the top of the score tool and make sure it's all the way across at the left hand side. And then just using your little scoring tool, you go along to five and a half, put your score tool down or your stylus down and you just slowly move down and the stylus will stay in one of the little grooves. If you go too fast, or if I go too fast, I find I go a bit wibbly wobbly. So just go slowly, mark where you need to be. And can you see how you get that score line just the same as on the trimmer? Right, let's pop this down. The next thing to do is to fold your card in half. And at the moment, my card is laying flat, but it has a dip or a dint. Some people call it a valley. And that's what the piece that I like to have on the top. And then I will just fold my card where that score is, push it down flat. You can squash it with your finger. You can use a bone folder, whatever you need. Okay. And there is your perfectly made card. So I'm just looking for the valley. There's the valley. I'm going to fold it over. Go over it with my burnishing tool, my, my little, um, what do you call it? I just said what the word was a minute ago, my bone folder. <laughs> okay, so now our two cards are exactly the same size. If you want to have them stand in that way, that's great. Or you can turn it round portrait and have it this way. So it opens like a flap there. Okay, so that's the first way to do your card. Have the eight and a half at the top, cut down at four and a quarter, 
score at five and a half. Now, the second way to cut your card is just to rotate the card 90 degrees and have it the other way around. So instead of having the short side at the top, you're going to have the long side at the top. And we're going to cut halfway along the long side, which would be five and a half. I'm going to, again, I'm just going to put it into the trimmer, line it up at five and a half. I'm just going to move that score out of the way. Close my trimmer guide down and with my blade, I'm just going to cut it. So I now have two pieces ready to score. I'm going to turn it round. This was the eight and a half inch side and I'm just going to score that at four and a quarter. If you're not quite sure which side you've got left, just you know, put it on your, either with a ruler or on your grid paper or your trimmer and you can check, oh yeah, that's the eight and a half side. Half of that is four and a quarter. So I'm going to score at four and a quarter. So I'm lining it up at four, moving it along to four and a quarter. I'm going to move my blade out of the way and just score with my scoring tool. Same again if you're using the scoreboard. So I've got my scoreboard back. I'm going to put it in, just orientating it the same way. Make sure it's in the corners. I know it measures eight and a half, so I have to be scoring at four and a quarter. I've got the lid, the small ball on the end of my stylus. I'm looking for four and a quarter, and I'm just going to put my score tool down, and then slowly, I'm going down the whole card. Okay, and that's the cutting and the scoring done. So I've got my valley on the top here, so I'm going to fold my card behind. Valley on the top, fold my card behind. And again, you can use these in either orientation. You can have them standing up portrait, you can have it standing up landscape. So whichever way you want to do it, that's fine. And you can see that all four cards we've made, even though we cut them and scored them differently, they all end up measuring the same. They're all four and a quarter by five and a half. Okay, and we know that they will fit into a medium envelope. Now, I've got an envelope here just to show you. In North America, we call this an A2 envelope, and it measures four and three eighths by five and three quarters. Now, you don't really need to know that's what it measures, because you know that a quarter piece of card or a half piece of card folded will be the perfect fit in that envelope. Okay. So that's our medium size envelope. Right, let's go back and find one of each card. Okay, so, so we've got one of each here. One scored at the four and a quarter, one scored at the five and a half. We don't need the other two, but I'm going to show you what you do next. Now, Doreen knew a little bit about layers and things because she said she'd been watching mine my, my videos and I was always talking about quarter of an inch and she didn't quite know why I was talking about quarter of an inch so I'm going to show you that as well. I have a little basic set of cards. They're all cut from different colour card stock. There's nothing that says, you know, the yellow one has to be cut to this size. It's just pieces of scrap card as I got them out. Okay? And I have them with a little circle one of those little, um, like a key ring circle things. I don't quite know what they call them. But I've got them on there and I keep them like that and I usually keep them for class. Now, when you look at all of these, you will see that the measurements all go down by a quarter of an inch. My first one is cut at four by five and a quarter. My next one goes down a quarter of an inch at each side. So it will go to three and three quarters by five. My next one, quarter of an inch taken off again. So three and a half by four and three quarters. And I just carried on doing that. So I've got lots of them. And these are your basic layers. And you use these if you want to put a card layer on or if you want to put a designer series paper layer on. It's exactly the same. 
for whatever you do. Now, when you know a little bit more about layers and you can get a little bit more fancy, instead of going down by a quarter of an inch, you can go down by an eighth of an inch. And then you will have just sort of this tiny little border round if you want to just make a colour pop or just highlight something. But for right now, we're doing our basic sizes. And I always use the same basic size for the inside. On coloured card, you need just a small border round. So I always do this red one. I always do four by five and a quarter because that fits in there perfectly. Okay, I'm going to glue that in right now. And what I tend to do is have a lot of these pieces of card already cut. Or if I'm making a card base and I only want half the piece of card, I'll use the other half piece and make um, just extra layers ready for when I need them. And what I do, I'll show you, I keep them in this little packet. So you can see I've got all different size layers. They actually all go down in quarter of an inch increments, but I've got them ready for when I'm making a card and I think, oh, I need three white pieces, I'm making three cards, I need something for the inside. And I just get that right out then. It's just handy to have some. So I'm just checking that my camera is still working then. It made a little noise and I wasn't sure why. Okay, so we've put this basic piece on the inside. Now, on the outside, I want to do a layer that's that size as well. So I'm going to cut my layer the same as the red. I've cut it in dark green and I know that that's going to fit really nicely. I've got that same even border. It doesn't matter if I want to do more layers. I know that they're all going to look the right size, you know, the right distance. Okay. So there we are, that's our basic layer. If you want to put another layer on, what I'm going to do is get the next one down. Or, I don't have to do the next one down, I could choose one of the others. Or if I think, mm, that's still a bit big, I don't want that one. Let's have a look at a three and a quarter by four and a half. So you see, then you get a picture frame effect. So just by going down the different sizings, you make your card look totally different. You either have a picture frame effect or you have um, just a, a quarter of an inch or an eighth of an inch on each side difference. But there's nothing to say that you have to choose the next one. See, it, it makes it so easy. And you don't have to cut a piece and then think, oh, I didn't want it quite that big. Let me just take a quarter of an inch off. Oh, oh, now I wanted it a bit bigger and now it's too small. Use these little templates. Put them on. See which one you really like. Okay. Let me show you if... Let me put the white piece on, which is this next size, this three and three quarters by five. If I put that on, I've got more stamping area. I've got space to maybe put an image, a sentiment and a ribbon. If I'm putting this smaller one on, I won't have as much space. I might be able to do an image here and a little banner with a sentiment on or a little piece of ribbon behind. So it really depends what you want your card to look like. I'm going to just attach that there. Let me get a little paper clip for now. I don't want to glue it on right yet. Okay, so I'll just pop it on with a paper clip. Let me get my other piece of card that we had out. I'm just going to put these back in order. Okay, so here's the other piece. And this one I had going landscape. There would have been no problem with us, with us having it portrait like this. But I chose for that to go landscape. I'm going to make this one landscape. Okay, but I'm going to make it differently. I'm going to put my same basic whisper white piece inside. So that's my red one, my four by five and a quarter. And we know it's going to fit. You don't, 
don't even have to think about it. Now, instead of a, a cardstock layer, I want to use some designer series paper. So, because I've got the new Just Jade card out, I'm going to use the new Forever Green paper. What is that called? Forever Greenery designer series paper. And I'm going to cut it as though it was this, a layer of card. I'm just going to cut that same size. So the same as the white on the inside. I've cut my DSP to four by five and a quarter. Now the only thing that's difficult about do, using DSP is trying to decide which side of the paper you want. Because with this set, all sides are beautiful. Okay. So I'm going to add this on here. Right. So there's my DSP layer. Now I want to have another little layer of card as a border, but I don't know what size I want. So I'm going to go through. Ooh, if I use that big one, I don't see much of the DSP. Well, let's have a look at the next one. Yeah, I get to see a little bit more of the DSP, but um, really, I'd like to see even more. Let's try the next one. Yeah, I quite like that. I see quite a lot of the DSP, but yeah, let's see if we can see a bit more. Mm, no, I'm going down to the next one. Right, there, I see lots of DSP. So I'm going to cut my piece of cardstock that I'm using next in a darker green. I'm going to cut it that size because look how much DSP you can see and how pretty that looks. So I've chosen two and three quarters by four. I'm going to attach this one. Put it on, make sure it's sort of centered, that you've got that nice border all the way around. Okay, and now I want a piece of Whisper White to stamp on. What size do I need? I'm just going to go down to the next smallest piece. So I know I need two and a half by three and three quarters. And here it is. I'm not actually going to attach it yet because I haven't stamped anything on it. But see how that gives you a totally different look. Let's have this one back. We had it landscape. Hmm, you know what? I've changed my mind. I want to have it portrait. No problem. Oh, I'm sorry, the sun is shining so much this afternoon. It's coming right through my craft room. So just by using those layers and those quick and easy little templates, I can easily work out what size to cut my DSP without wasting any, what size to cut my cardstock without it being a bit too big, a bit too small. Oh, it didn't really fit. So I hope that's a help. Doreen, if you've got any other questions, send me another message and uh, I can always make another video that will help you. Okay, so I will put these sizings on my blog for you. And it's, it's not rocket science. You know, hundreds and hundreds of demonstrators have all got little cards with sizings on like this. So I usually give people who join my team a set of these so that they can go away and work out what sizings they want as well. I use mine a lot. Not because I don't know the sizings, but sometimes just because I don't quite know what I'm aiming for. When I'm designing, I don't know if I want to see more DSP or if I want to see more stamping. So I'll use these just on my card, just to work out what I want it to look like. I hope that helps a lot of people just with basic cutting and basic layering skills. But if you do have other questions, drop me a line. I'm always willing to try and make a video to help everybody. Thanks ever so much for watching everybody. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday and I'll see you all again soon. Bye bye.